I would like to point out one verse, 19. He said, um, uh, verse 18, he's talking about a hope in front of us. And he said, which hope, <laughs> excuse me, we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, which enter into that within the veil, whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now, verse 19 said, our hope is like an anchor of the soul, an anchor of the soul, sure and steadfast. Now, it, does anybody in here not know what an anchor is? I'm sure everybody does. Ship sailing up there, say we're underwater, top of the water up yonder, the ship's up there sailing. When they want to stop, when they want that ship to be stable and not move, they let down an anchor. An anchor is usually made out of iron, big old heavy thing, depending on how big the boat is. It can be, it can be Lord Demons on the Titanic, bigger than that, bigger than that uh, baptistry hole there. And a great big old thing, got a prongs on both sides. And they, the, the purpose of them is when they hit the, the ground, they get a hold of rocks or whatever's down there and grab it and the ship can't move. And that anchor holds that ship. Now listen to me. The Bible said our hope in the Lord is the anchor of our soul. Just like that anchor holds that ship, our hope, holds our soul in the Lord. Hallelujah, glory to God. Thank the Lord. It's good to be saved by His grace. Now, I want to preach tonight on the subject, my anchor holds. Hope is one of the greatest things in life. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, in 1 Corinthians 13, when he wrote that famous chapter on real Bible love, charity, he said, there's three things that last, faith, hope, and charity. So hope was one of the three things that is everlasting and that we have in this earth. Uh, the Bible said without hope, we are in this life all men most miserable. And our hope tonight reaches beyond the grave. We're not, we don't go to church. I don't, I don't know, some people might, but I don't go to church because I just grew up in church and, and you know, it's a thing to do and it's a, you have a job in the community and you're, a, you're the sheriff or you're the, uh, the banker or you're a lawyer or you're a, a, a big shot in town or something and, and you just go to church and it's societal like that. I don't want to go to church. We go to church because when we meet here Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, we have a hope that's beyond this life. Beyond the grave, hallelujah. And I want to talk about that tonight. I want to say our hope is in the Lord. Our hope is not in the Baptist. Our hope is not in the Republicans. Our hope is not in the Democrats. Our hope is not in Parliament or in the government of any foreign country. Our hope is not even in a preacher or a church. Our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. And that never changes. When all else fails, that hope that's got my soul anchored. It's anchored. And when I got saved back when I was 18 years old, the, that hope became the anchor of my soul. And through all the many dangers, tolls and snares, my anchor still holds. Amen. I'm telling you, buddy, I've seen some water go under the bridge, buddy. Uh, I know people may not believe it, I've seen a lot of water go under the bridge. I've seen them come and I've seen them go. I've seen churches rise and fall. I've seen people get on fire and, and die out and freeze to death. I've seen people uh, look like they're going to set the woods on fire. Next thing you know, they're out at a liquor store somewhere. I've seen, I've seen stuff go up and stuff go down. I've seen them come and go. I've seen them attack the church. I've seen them attack the Bible. I've seen them out. But all through these many, many years, I can truthfully say, that there's something like an anchor inside me holding me. Now, can't you say that? If you can say that, say amen right there. I want to say three things about it right quickly tonight. The first thing I'm going to say is that anchor is sure and steadfast. Hallelujah. It is sure and steadfast. Now, them anchors, they're made by experienced smith, like a blacksmith or something, and the angles and prongs are shaped 
and the right angle so that they can hit in that dirt and dig down in there and get a hold of, of whatever's down there during these crazy, unknown, unprecedented, you heard that a lot lately, ain't you? Unpredictable times, I'm glad my anchor holds. Like the Apostle Paul himself, he had beatings, he had stonings, he had his brains nearly beat out. They left him for dead. They put him in jail. They put stripes on his back. They beat him. Ain't none of us had to go through that. I've been through a little bit, but not that. I mean, I've had people threaten to kill me and beat me up and everything else, uh, but I've never, I've never actually had stripes all over my back and blood run down my body uh, for the Lord. I've never had that. Uh, we made for it's over with, but old Paul had it. And you know what he said? He said, hey, we have an anchor of the soul. I'd like to get that down in your heart tonight. It'll stick. It'll hold you. My anchor holds. My anchor holds. Amen. You know, uh, uh, we're living in a, in a crazy time. And everywhere I go, people tell me this. I'll say, how's your mama doing? How's so-and-so doing? They said, Brother Danny, we're scared. They said, we're scared. Uh, we turn on the news and we hear this. We turn on, uh, stuff comes on our phone. We don't know what to believe. We don't know who to believe. We hear this. We hear that. And to be honest with you, we're scared. Now, I preached a few weeks ago that God hath not given us the spirit of fear. And one of the ways that big government controls people is fear. If you keep people scared, they're very easy to control. That happened in communist countries. That happened in, in uh, uh, Nazi Germany. And so people are scared. People are scared. And if people are scared, they get this herd-like mentality, and it's easy to control them. But I'm telling you tonight, we, now listen, we, we ought to pray, and we ought to be bold, but we do not have to be afraid. You hear me? We do not have to be afraid. Our God that made the world knew this was going to happen when the world began. He knew all this was coming before me and you was born. He is on his throne. He is totally in control. That anchor of my soul still holds. Thank God it still is sure and steadfast. I have somebody told me the other day, I read, you know what's true and what ain't, that already there are 100 thousand, hear me, 100,000 businesses that will not open back up because of this economic crisis that me and you are in. Think about that. We all know people. I know some in Marion. I know some here in Morgan. Some of my favorite places to eat are gone, never to come back. Now, when this happens and the stimulus money runs out and reality sets in and then they push a second wave of the coronavirus and all that, there's no telling what we're liable to see here in the next few months. There's no telling. But I'm telling you one thing. I'm telling you here tonight, you don't have to be afraid. I, I read uh, that, uh, that Bill Gates, and I don't mean to keep picking on him, but I don't know who suddenly died and left him in charge of the world. Uh, but uh, he, uh, he is the greatest contributor individual to WHO, W-H-O, the World Health Organization, and that, uh, that Bill Gates and some of his colleagues have profited $280 billion during this last couple of months off of this epidemic. He, by the way, owns patents for viruses and some other things that I won't talk about right now. And uh, you just don't know. You just absolutely do not know what in the world are, is going on. You say, Brother Danny, I, I don't know. Now, now I'm going to say this tonight. Every time you start talking about people like this, people immediately say, oh, my goodness, he's one of them right-wing conspiracy. Well, I tell you what you are. You're a nut uh, because uh, you, you're just a nut. You're, you're judging me, and you don't even know what I believe and what I'm thinking. I'm not a right-wing conspiracy conspiracy theorist, I am a Bible believer. And in the Bible, there are conspiracies. They are. But I believe different than a lot of them crazy ones. I believe the devil is the main conspirator. And a lot of these people that fits in the plan don't even know they're in the plan. I'll tell you what, I think, and I could be wrong, 
I do not believe, neither do I accuse, I do not believe that Bill Gates and some other people that y'all see on the news all the time sat down in a dark room somewhere and said, I know what let's do. Let's do this and introduce a virus and crash the economy and control the world and make everybody take the mark of the beast. I don't believe that. I don't believe they deliberately have it. I believe the devil is always trying to do something. I believe the devil is always up to something. And I believe a lot of the plots and plans of the devil fail and crash. But once in a while, he gets one that takes hold and it works out. What I think happened is this thing started over there in Wuhan, China, and the devil took advantage of it and worked a little over here 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 and worked a little over there and worked a little over there. I don't think Bill Gates is out to set up the mark of the beast and worship the devil. No, I, mean, I, I don't believe it. I hope not. I don't believe he even realizes. I, I don't believe he even realizes that he's part of of the plan to get the world ready to accept the mark of the beast. You say, oh my goodness, Brother Danny. I had people write and say, you are so crazy. You're saying the coronavirus is the mark of the beast. No, here's what I'm saying. You're listening to demons. I give you $1,000 cash tonight. If anybody here can tell me I've ever said the coronavirus is the mark of the beast. I never said it was. I never said a vaccine was. I never said that. I said, you've got to be as blind as a bat not to see that's moving us in that direction. you got to be crazy not to see that. You can't see that. I don't even know if you believe the Bible. I know people are so, you know what? We wound up this is where people are blinded by their political beliefs and affiliation. I try to accept the truth. I don't care who says it. If a left winger says something that's true, praise God. Let's listen. If a right winger says something that's wrong, scratch it. Right? There's a lot of people say if their friends don't say it, they don't agree with it. Or if somebody they don't like says it, they automatically don't agree with it. What me and you ought to be interested in is the truth. And the truth is, there is coming a mark. And the truth is, you will be required to have it to buy or sell. And the truth is, all this stuff is pushing the whole world in that direction just as sure as my name's Danny Castle, this thing's headed us in that direction. I didn't say as a mark of the beast. I don't know. Maybe years down the road. Do you know, there's, they say now, they're saying a lot of COVID, the word COVID. Uh, I thought that was a strange word when I first saw it. I thought that's a weird thing. COVID, I thought it meant for Corona, VI, virus. D. You know what COVID stands for? They're saying certificate of vaccination ID. And this the certificate, you'll eventually have to have some kind of proof that you have been vaccinated. Now, we're not going to get into the, the do's and don'ts and ifs and ours and, and should you and shouldn't you on vaccination. Some people take the flu vaccine, some don't. Some take the other vaccine, some don't. Uh, and you'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, but I'll tell you one thing. There, if they're saying that you'll eventually go to a ball game uh, to, to eat in a restaurant, that you will have to eventually have to show some kind of proof of vaccine. Now, that's when it's going to get scary uh, if that comes to pass. Apple and Google, Apple and Google are joining forces on technology for an app that will, on your, if you have an iPhone, and I don't, do I? I didn't think I did, huh? People ask me all the time, is your phone out? I don't know. Hope not now. Yeah, 81% of people in America have, a, have an iPhone. And Apple and Google are joining forces on technology that can warn you of COVID certificate of identification or vaccine identification 2020 exposure. In other words, soon your smartphone will be able to tell you that you have been close to someone who's been infected at a restaurant. Uh, I went to the flea market yesterday. Oh, glory to God, it felt good. I had no idea what a redneck I really am deep down. How, I didn't know I could miss a place as bad as I missed that place. I got, I, me, and, me and Malachi was visiting out on visitation. And uh, by the way, we, I ain't had nobody get mad at me because you didn't get to go visiting. 
Uh, 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 we've been playing basketball over the house, and some people coming over to play basketball. And anybody wants to come play basketball, you're welcome to come. And I heard somebody got mad because they didn't get invited, but nobody's gotten mad at me because I didn't invite them to go visit them. Not one person has got mad. And I, 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 everybody's invited. I can't believe that. They went visiting and didn't ask me. All you people have been off work all this time. That's been your excuse for years. No. What, what's the excuse now? I better get back on my subject. You liked it when I was talking about the mark of the beast and not your laziness. Preach, brother, daddy. Woo! Going to be saved. Anyway, they say, that your smartphone can identify somebody who's been infected because of little waves. That's weird, isn't it? And I can see where that might be a help. I can also see where it's starting to get a little weird and scary. If they say that sports can't come back, and that's what they're trying to say, until everybody's been vaccinated and if you ain't been, you can't go to a ball game. If that happens, you see another big push toward the, the real thing that's coming when the Antichrist comes. Bill Gates ain't the Antichrist. Obama not the Antichrist. Donald Trump's not the Antichrist. Uh, Dr. Fossey's not the Antichrist. Uh, the Antichrist is going to be a superhuman being, the devil in the flesh, and he ain't here yet that we know of. He might be here, but we don't know of him. They call it API, Application Programming Interface. Now listen, if that happens, and they have all these tracers, they're hiring, I don't know who's paying for it, government, I guess, thousands and thousands of tracer, contact tracer. In other words, somebody here wants to get sick, and they got the coronavirus, they come to your house, They'd want to know everybody that you've been in contact with, unless it's at Walmart. And, and they would go find all them people, and all them people would have to self-quarantine in their house for 14 days that you've been in contact with. Now you can immediately see where, that, where that's going. That's going. That's going completely crazy. Because uh, for one thing, it's impossible. For another thing, if somebody tests negative today, if you test them at school or test them on, they might test positive tomorrow. You can't test everybody every day. So there's something, something very, very weird and wrong about this. People are blinded by their political beliefs or people that they like. If somebody that they don't like says something, they immediately scratch it off. And if somebody they like says something, they tend to believe it. And that's, that's sad that it's that way. Uh, people, you've heard me say, you've heard me say that the three, uh, you've heard me say this in, in, in sermons before, the three smartest people I ever heard talk this a few years ago was uh, O'Reilly, Ruckman, and Rush, them three R's. And, and people say, well, Brother Danny believes everything. They, oh, no, 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 you're wrong. You're really underestimating me. I disagree with every one of them on a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. You know, well, you just like them. You're wrong again. You're underestimating, Brother Danny. I don't even like neither one of them guys. All three of them are obnoxious. But I have a love for the truth. I have a love for the truth. You know what I like about Dr. Rogman teaching that Bible? The truth, brother. The truth, personality wise. Lord, you can't stand it. Uh, and O'Reilly and R Limbaugh, the same. they all three have beliefs that are wrong and anti-biblical and all that. But I, brother, I got something down in my soul, the Holy Ghost of God that bears witness of the truth, and I know the truth when I hear it. And there's something going on bigger than a virus in this country, in this world. We are seeing the whole world make steps toward accepting the mark of the beast and the enemy. Christ, but during it all, through it all, we have an anchor of our soul that stands steadfast and sure. Now, that's what people don't like about me. I split both sides. If both sides are mad at you, you're, you're usually pretty right. Amen. Isn't it weird? 
that right in the middle of all this stuff going on, the Pentagon suddenly decides to release all their UFO stuff. Isn't that weird? Not last year, not next year. Right in the middle of a pandemic, when the world's gone crazy and people saying, what's, what's the truth? What's going, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? All of a sudden, all of a sudden, y'all see it a few weeks ago? The Pentagon puts video out. It's been on every major news channel of pilots. Try, you can see it on video. A UFO. Some of you sitting right here tonight, you say, well, I don't believe in all that. You, you're just in denial and you ain't done your homework. All them people ain't lying. Millions of people ain't lying. Millions of people from different parts of the world that have never met each other tell the exact same story. I'm not a prophet, but wouldn't it be something if this thing got worse and worse? And I'm just, this is total conjecture, total guesswork. I ain't claiming this is the word of God. I ain't claiming I'm right because I don't know. Wouldn't it be weird if this thing got worse and worse and the stage was set People go crazy, and about that time they get up there and they get them hologram. They can project those images down, you know, make it look just like a real. They can have Elvis up there dancing around. You'd honestly think it's him now. You see the things they do, Michael Jackson, and everybody else. And you, uh, the Bible said that the devil will have power to give image to the uh, life to the image of that beast, and the whole world fall down and worship him. And about that time, uh, UFOs start landing, and it's on TV, and it's on there. I didn't say this for sure. I don't know. But I wouldn't doubt it one bit. Them sons of God back there in Genesis 6, but them things come the first time it's the days of Noah, and you can count on if they come in the second time, the days of Noah. And they're already here. There's, there's supernatural beings, and they're around this world, and they're coming, and they wind up, and they're saying, we got the answer. We can get you out of this mess. We can, we can deliver you. We got the answer to all the world's problems. We're going to solve this. And they touch people and heal them. And the Bible said they'll have power to call down fire from heaven and work mighty miracles buddy it's coming it's coming this whole world is rocking and reeling brother on the way to hell 99 miles an hour but oh my 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 in the middle of it all in the middle of it all you know if the world if there was UFO landed on the White House lawn this week and it said we're here to straighten out the world's problems and everybody just fell down and said these are our super space brothers that have been monitoring us since they placed us here thousands of years ago and now they've come to solve our problem the whole world would go crazy over that and all of a sudden they'd say see there the Bible ain't true see there God's not real but you know what me and you would do we'd hold on to that old King James Bible and we'd say bless the Lord it was true when I got saved we knew it's coming anyway we believed the book and thank God our anchor holds no matter what happens in this world See, well, what if they what if they materialized something in Washington D.C. and healed everybody of the coronavirus, brother Danny? What if it did? I ain't got nothing to do with our hope in Jesus Christ. That'd be nice if somebody could heal it, unless it's the devil. And then you know worse stuff's coming, and worse stuff is coming. I'll say this this evening, and I'll be through. How can we know? When the devil comes around and with your doubt, I'll tell you what to do. When the devil comes around and he says, things are getting scary. How do you know you're really saved? You probably ain't never even really saved. You didn't say the right words. You remember what you done the other day? You'd never done that if you was really saved. You're probably not. The devil's going to come with your doubt. I'll tell you what you do. I tell you what you do, child of God. You point him to Calvary. And you say, look at there. When God changes his mind about Calvary, then you can tell me I'm not saved. When God takes the blood out of the book, you can tell me I'm not saved. When the Lord said the blood's no good no more and the blood won't cover sin, you can say, okay, I'm not saved no more. But as long as the blood's there, as long as Jesus is in heaven, as long as the book tells me, brother, we're just as saved as we ever was. Lord, God, our he's an anchor of our soul, both sure and steadfast our hope in the Lord Jesus Christ tell you what I'm going to do tonight I'm going to let you hear that song this is an old song I don't know if you can get the words I wish you could I feel sorry for y'all that are younger and wasn't with us in the old days when we used to sing it Carrie remembers it Brandon and Christy remember it some of y'all some of y'all remember it Steve probably remembers it though the angry waves 
roll on my, on my sinful soul. I have an anchor, safe and sure, that will evermore endure. My anchor hold. Play it, Dylan. Now I want you to just sit and listen to this great song. Turn it up. Turn it up. That's a Christian song. Hey man, hallelujah. That will evermore endure. And it holds. Hey man, blow your wildest wind, old Gail. On my bark, so small and frail. By his grace, I shall not fail. Woo! My anchor holds. You believe that? Play it, brother. Listen now. No matter what we have to go through, no matter what the devil may throw at us, no matter how bad it might get, or no, they may wind up throwing us in jail. They may wind up, there'll be people in the tribulation have their heads cut off. There is, thousands of them have their heads cut off. But my anchor, it holds. My anchor holds. Blow your wildest winds, old Gale. On my bark so small and frail. By His grace, I shall prevail. Hey man, and my anchor. you could hear the words of that all the time. God done something for me way back years ago that's held me all these years and I believe he's going to hold us the rest of the way. You keep trusting him people. You keep believing him. God, he never said there's going to be no rose garden. He didn't say we wouldn't be persecuted or laughed at or made fun of. I want you to say in your heart, thank God my anchor holds. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, I pray for every person here tonight, those that are watching at home, that you would bless them in a mighty, great, and powerful way. Any of those that are filled with doubt, I pray that you'd replace it with faith. If they're filled with fear, replace it with confidence and hope. I pray for those, a lot of your people, people everywhere I go, a lot of people scared, and they don't know what's going to happen. And Lord, we know it's a fearful time, and you said that men's hearts would be failing them for fear and for looking after those things that are coming on the earth. Heavenly Father, please, please touch us, oh God. Do what ought to be done in every life, and help us to go here out of here tonight knowing that our anchor holds. I pray you'd use this message to encourage somebody out yonder at home or in another state or another country tonight that would love to be here but can't. Please help them. Lord, bless them. Keep your hand on Shining Light Baptist Church. Keep that bubble of protection over us, Lord, over my family and over our church family. I ask you in Jesus' name, amen.